Stories stir the soul. Stories reveal. And stories heal. In this podcast, we will give you an inside look at someone who's had a life-changing breakthrough. Real people, real stories with real breakthroughs. As a health and wellness expert and coach and Todd as a men's mentor, we've seen firsthand what God can do when it comes to a breakthrough. So lean in, listen well, this could be your biggest breakthrough. Hello and welcome to Your Biggest Breakthrough. I'm your host, Wendy Pett. I'm Todd Isberger. Yes, you are. We are so excited. What are are you doing? Why are you? Quiet, just a second. Hang on. Okay. We are starting a podcast. Thank you, Lord, very much. Amen. Okay, you were praying. Yeah, I was uh, just uh, bowing in prayer for a moment there uh, (laughs) because I thought it would be very appropriate considering what we're going to be talking about today. Oh, I see. I get it. I get it. You know, sometimes you simply amaze me. Well, we're talking. Thank you. Thank you so much. (laughs) We're talking about prayer today, but not just prayer. We're talking with someone who knows a lot about prayer. Yes. And how he developed an app called Pray.com. So one of the things we're excited about today is that you're going to hear some stories um, that miraculous, real, yeah, miraculous interventions, yes, so that God could work His plan without anybody knowing it until it all of a sudden was revealed. I love that about God. And uh-huh. you're going to be freed up because I promise you, most of us kind of sweat it out when it comes to prayer. Right? You know, we just make it too complicated. And you're going to hear today ways in which you can be freed up. And the simplicity of and, prayer. And enjoy <laughs> prayer. Yes, because we have Matt Potter. Matthew Potter is a co-founder, is the co-founder of Pray.com, the world's number one app for daily prayer and faith-based audio content. It's driven by a mission to grow faith and cultivate community. At a time when Potter was looking for ways to give back and become more spiritually connected, he serendipitously ran into his friend, Steve Gatina, at a coffee shop in Santa Monica, California. Yeah, that's one of the stories we were talking about, yeah. too. That whole thing was cool. So shortly after that divine run-in, uh, Potter joined forces with Gatina to launch Pray.com, uh, desiring to apply his expertise to doing something bigger for the kingdom of God. And in the process, by the way, uh, even prior to this, he had been developing over 6,000 apps. So yeah. he knows his stuff. Over the last 10 years. So he is yeah. an app developer. He knows his stuff. And he and his wife, they call Southern California home. But we are so excited also that yeah. your biggest breakthrough and the Visibly Fit podcast, they're both on Pray.com. So enjoy the show. Well, welcome, Matt Potter, to your biggest breakthrough. We are delighted to have you today with Pray.com. You're on with us today, and and uh, your biggest breakthrough is actually on Pray.com. So this is a very special episode. Yeah, can't wait. So excited to be here. Honored and blessed to spend this time with you guys today, and uh, love that you guys have partnered with us. And the podcast is on the Pray.com platform. Well, you know, there's I don't know anybody in our listening audience who hasn't heard of Pray.com. I mean, it's been out there a few years. It's widely known. It's an incredible app. We're going to talk about uh, how things came together. But I, I would assume that since uh, since you are MrPray.com, people <laughs> are going to automatically say, oh, he's the, he's the prayer guy. So he must really know something about prayer. So yep, yep. <laughs> we're gonna, I get we're, the Pray app guy a lot. The Pray app <laughs> sure. guy a lot. So. Well, people must assume that you've got a tight connection with God. You know something about prayer. You wouldn't have developed this app. So why don't you just take us back a little bit to your early journey of faith? Like, how did you get connected with God? When did that all become real? And then how did it lead you to Pray.com? You know, uh, it actually, for me, uh, Todd, it start, it starts right at birth. Actually. Mm-hmm. Uh, my mom was a 15 year old girl that walked into a local community church, a block away from an abortion clinic. And she walked into that church to talk to the pastor about the biggest decision she was going to make in her life because she was 15 and she was pregnant. And so the pastor, uh, actually, you know, didn't know what to tell her. So he called a buddy of his who planted a 20 person church in Los Angeles and said, Hey, this 15 year old girl walked into my church, never met her before. Uh, what should I tell her? And she's pregnant. And the pastor in Los Angeles said, you know what? Providentially, I just met with this incredible Christian married couple. They joined my 20 person congregation and they've been trying to have children for 10 years and couldn't. What if we set up an adoption here? 
And I was the baby that the 15 year old girl brought into the church. And so I got adopted because of these two pastors that were friends. So I felt the providential pull on my life since the very beginning. Powerful, Matt. I did not know that story. That's That's a goose bumper right there, dude. I'm telling you, people (laughs) look at your face and realize how God put everything together with the timing and everything. Absolutely. All right. So where where did you, where did you grow up and uh, what was your journey of faith in your early childhood? Yeah, so I, I grew up in Granada Hills, and um, which is the San Fernando Valley in Los Angeles, California. Beautiful. Um, my dad, because he got me from the church, became the head elder of our church and helped the pastor grow that church to from 20 people to a 15,000 person mega church. And <laughs> wow. We, we just built a, a, you know, a $60 million brand new sanctuary. You know, land in California is very expensive, so uh, it's all relative. but. Uh, we built this brand new sanctuary. Uh, pastor is Dudley Rutherford. He's incredible. And Kayla Rutherford, his daughter, is one of my best friends. So I mm. grew up in church. So my early faith journey was growing up in church, spending time with uh, Dudley, who was like a second dad to me, and my dad, uh, my adopted dad, and uh, going to Bible study fellowship. So, uh. Uh, you know, my dad set an incredible incredible example for me. My, I come from a big football family. I am not talented in athletics in any way, shape or form, but, uh, my dad, you know, coached John Elway, helped John Elway, uh, become the oh, quarterback wow. that he is today. Wow. And, um, <clears throat> my family is all about football. So when we started doing Bible study fellowship as a kid, and it was Monday nights, and I saw that you know, the Bible and God took over football for my dad. I knew that was the biggest thing ever. And this is something that I better pay attention to and do. And so that's how my early uh, journey of faith began was Bible study fellowship. And for 10 years, yeah, I did that with my dad on Monday nights and some of my fondest memories. It was that that is so cool, Matt, because I think about BSF and, and how it is today versus how it was back then. Back then it was actually really regimented. I mean, it still is, but it's a little yeah. more loose where you can actually have conversation in BSF yeah. and it, you know what I mean? It's a little more uh social. Totally. Um, so it's a little different, but man, the power of that. And and I grew up in Texas, so I'm all about football. I hear you. And yeah. so for that to for Bible to take um, precedence <clears throat> over uh, football is a really big deal. So yeah. I think you know when it comes to prayer, Matt. I think you know you're you're describing well. I've always been in the church. You know this is just what we do. I mean, did did prayer always come easy for you, or um, kind of tell me a little bit about your your in-depth walk with, mm-hmm. with how you pray and your relationship with the Lord? Yeah, I mean, since, since a young age, I've always uh, had an easy personal relationship with Jesus and an easy ability to pray. Um, and, and, you know, I just feel like, I felt like it was just kind of built in from, from birth, really. Um, I knew that God had my life and was in control of my life and put me, I felt like, God put me in those positions from the beginning and has always been there for me. So for me, it was easy. Um, It wasn't like an aha moment one day. Um, And, you know, I had three very specific prayers over the course of my life. And I'm not going to dive into the specifics of what they were, but, you know, God showed up in those three very specific prayers and showed me the way, um, the path for my life in those three moments. And for me, that was uh, just so confirmational uh, that I was on the right journey. And even when I wasn't on the right journey, I knew uh, the way to go Hmm. and the way God was pointing me to, uh, even with Pray.com. So I I had a very successful app company. We built over 7,000 apps in the App Store. I built that over a decade. And I just felt God tugging on my heart to do something bigger for the kingdom, mm-hmm. bigger, filled with bigger purpose. And um, at a coffee shop, randomly or providentially, my co-founder, <laughs> Steve, walked through the door, told me what he was doing. And he told me he was starting Pray.com and he needed help. And Steve didn't know that providentially the day before I talked to my pastor's daughter, Kayla, on how I could help and give back to the church and what I could do 
to live a life filled with more purpose and meaning outside of just making revenue, which there's nothing wrong with, you know, doing well. Um, but I talked to her for a good hour and the next day, Steve walks through the door and says, I'm building pray.com. I want to help people all over the world reconnect with their faith on the phone. And it just so happens that I'm there at the coffee right. shop. Right. Yeah, God was not messing set. around. Oh, he said, "Let's go." And background, yeah. So <laughs> I don't know if you did you like if you got a thick head or what because he really knows how to bust in on your life. I think it's just so good. <laughs> yeah, uh, I mean, it's it was crazy. There was another moment, you know. I, I'm praying every day. Uh, we start pray.com. It's going really well. I'm praying every day. Hey, God, I want to find you know, my partner for life. I want to find my wife mm. and praying every single day. Uh, I meet this incredible young lady and three dates in, we find out that we met for 15 minutes on the beach 10 <laughs> years earlier. Really? Uh, yeah. That's great. And the first question uh, she asked me on our first date is, are you a Christian? Because if uh, not, then this is, we can make this end super that's fast. That's so good. I <laughs> love her already. Uh, I love her so already. Good. And so I was like, this would... is the woman for me. Jeez. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. Uh. So I, okay. So I want, I asked you that question about prayer because I think sometimes there are people that are listening that are like, you know, I really want to be able to pray better or uh, easier or, or have this intimate relationship with the Lord, but I don't know how. Yeah. What would you say to that person that really wants to pray more intentionally and, and hear from the Lord like you have. Yeah. Um, they want that in their life. What would you say to them for their like first steps? How you to? know, Wendy, for me, I, I go to church on Sunday. I was in Bible study fellowship, but I didn't go to seminary. I'm not a theologian. Um, I talk to God just like I talk to my best friend. And I talk That's to good. Jesus just like I talk to my best friend. So there's no wrong way. You know, God... <laughs> You know, Jesus is the Alpha, the Omega, the beginning and the end, right? Uh, he knows all things. He's in all things, omnipresent, omniscient, um, uh, omnipotent, right? All powerful. He knows your heart. He knows what you want to say, but you just got to try to say it the best way that you can. There's no wrong way to talk to your best friend, right? There's no wrong mm -hmm. way to ask uh, God and talk to Jesus about the things that are going on in your life. And you already know I always anyway. encourage people to not just ask for things, right? Like don't mm. just ask when things are going wrong, but really take the time, uh, you know, in the mornings to have gratitude and just thank God for the simple things that are going on. You know, uh, I woke up today, I'm healthy and I have an amazing wife and life. Thank you. You know, um, instead of just always coming for things, but when you do ask for things, ask for bigger things than you could even think of or imagine hmm. because uh, you know, for God, it's like that. Um, God is able. So simple. Right. Yeah. And so, we, you know, we, I think we, we overcomplicate it. Right? Yeah. What we right. love about your approach is that you, you keep it simple and you keep it casual uh, and you keep it relationship based instead of religious. And I think that's where a lot of people can get hung up that prayer becomes a form of religion. Yeah. And then it becomes kind of, scary and intimidating and everything else. Whereas you're just saying, let's just, let's just talk with God. But there's one other thing that, that we're observing about what's happened in your life. You obviously have an expectation that God is listening and that when you ask God for something that he's prepared to answer. Uh, Absolutely. Otherwise, I don't think that sign over your head, pray.com would be in existence. So no. how did that come about? I mean, you have this serendipitous, uh, opportunity here with Steve the coffee shop and yeah. yeah. So take us back there. Then, then what happened? I mean, cause you didn't have a pray.com on your mind when you walked in there. No, no. So, you know, it, it's, it's a long story, but I spent 10 years bootstrapping, building this incredible company. And I reached this weird point in my life where I didn't have to work if I didn't want to. And mm -hmm. it's a really weird thing. Um, for me, I called, friends and they basically, you know, said, whatever, call me later. <laughs> and <laughs> I called my pastor's daughter and she said, you know what, Matt, we're opening a new campus in Santa Monica. We're opening at the Veterans Center. Why don't you help me open the new campus? And I said, Kayla, I'm an introverted tech entrepreneur and I haven't been to seminary. That's terrifying. I don't even, <laughs> you know, being on a podcast interview for me is scary. So I, I like, you know, sitting in my room alone playing on the computer but it was um 
or not playing on the computer, but working on the computer. And uh, so, yeah, it was, it was interesting that God just presented that opportunity the next day. And when Steve and I linked up, Steve was going through a terrible time in his life and he didn't grow up a Christian. He grew up to a single Jewish mom on welfare and uh, a dad that was Catholic. And they came to him when he was 12 years old and said, Hey, Steve, you want to be Catholic or you want to be Jewish? And he's like, I want to play football. I'm 12, you know? (laughs) And, (laughs) uh, you know, so (laughs) even Steve's, Steve's story um, is incredible in that he ended up becoming the 29 year old CEO of the world's largest aerial production and surveillance company and became a Christian later in life. And the fact that we connected in that moment with our other co-founder, Ryan and Mike, um, it's just crazy what God is capable of. Ryan went to jail for dealing drugs and having guns in his car. And God will use anyone. (laughs) He got saved in jail and he couldn't get a job. And a pastor down the street gave him a job as the facilities manager, which you know, means janitor. And yeah. Yeah. I love it. The church gave him a scholarship to go to Calvin College. He got his computer science degree, and Ryan is super, super wow. smart. Wow. And he became an engineer for a bunch of insurance companies building out their back end infrastructure and security. And hmm. I, Steve, can, I, can I just put you on pause for a second? Because I'm yeah. just thinking there's somebody listening uh, and, and they're thinking, it seems, it seems so much easier. Than, uh, than what I'm aware of. Meaning, just hearing your story and your partner's stories, I mean, it sounds like from a sovereignty standpoint, God from the very beginning knew what he was going to do in their lives. And Absolutely. so each one of you had various experiences and training and whatnot that, that, <laughs> training. Uh, yeah, that allowed you to draw from so that he yeah. can use you in a bigger, better way now. So I guess I just want to encourage our listeners that if you're feeling like, you're not really in the center of what God has for you. Just hang in there and trust the fact that he's given you certain experiences and opportunities will come, won't they? I mean, Matt, they're Absolutely. Kind of and I think right? the least likely is the most likely in a lot of times, right? Absolutely. Look at the Old Testament. It's, yep. it's proven for sure. And it's not going to be no work. I mean, mm. Ryan, Mike, Steve, and I, we're, we're still doing 80 hour weeks. We're doing 100 hour weeks in the beginning. You know, yeah. Uh, yeah. it's not like, God's saying, Hey, I'm going to give you everything. Right. It's not going to be any work. Right. Um, yes. That's a good word yes. right there, Matt. It's going to yes. be hard work and there's going to be moments where you question and you go, mm. why am I doing this? And God gave me this opportunity. It's a lot of work, <laughs> you know, uh, <laughs> and I didn't have to work and here yeah, I go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. He's right. and, and you know what? He's preparing you for something. Yeah. Mm. And, that's good. You know, the, I, I don't believe in luck. I believe preparation meets opportunity, and that's biblical. God puts you mm-hmm. in the position uh, that He's put you in to get experience and skills that He'll use for the kingdom later. And I Amen. believe that He's done that with my life and my co founder's life as well. So Amen. Good. I love that. Can you tell us a little bit about, um, you know, you said one of your, your co founder, Steve, wasn't in the best place uh, mentally when you saw him at the coffee shop. Let's talk about prayer and the connection with mental health and, and prayer and how that can uh, bridge the gap, how br- prayer can. Yeah. Yeah. That's a great question. It's also a question we've been asking at pray.com for the better part of a couple of years here. Hmm. We created a pray science division and I know, right. You think, wait yeah. a minute, religion science. and science, that yeah. doesn't go together. Tell us more. That's right. weird, you know, <clears throat> right. Uh, but really, it works. And, uh, you know, God is the creator of the universe. Like Louis Giglio. It makes me think Louis Giglio stuff. Laminin. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. we are in the middle of clinical trials to prove the efficacy of prayer on your brain and your body and what it does to you. And hmm. really, some of the things that we found in other studies and Pray.com's studies is, you know, prayer increases the gray matter density in your brain. There's, there's all sorts of things out there where it reduces anxiety and depression. And why wouldn't prayer have a physical effect on your body when you're talking to your creator who created your body in the first place, right? Um, yeah. What Serotonin. A and... Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. 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 I, think I read a the... study yesterday about couples that pray out loud together, like <sighs> one in every 1100 get divorced. One 
divorce wow. in 1100. Well, they were going to do great. We're going to think that right? pray out loud together. Oh, oh, we're going to do well. That's encouraging. <laughs> I, 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 I wonder if the challenge in prayer isn't, again, sort of the notion that to be effective in prayer, you have to be very disciplined, very rigorous and regimented. And like Martin Luther, it was said, uh, you know, when he had lots to do for the, he typically would pray three hours a day. That's how the story goes. But on the days where he had a lot to do, he'd pray four hours a day. Now I have no idea if that's true or not, but you know what I'm saying? The notion for most people is that prayer is a lot of work and it's kind of beyond me. And I, I just don't know that I've, I've got the ability or the time to really invest in what I perceive to be meaningful prayer. I think the enemy wants you to think that. Yeah. Yeah. I think, you know, if you, if you, if you have a healthy fear of God and you also Mm -hmm. believe that he is your creator, I mean, it's so easy just to, you know, spend two minutes, five minutes in, in between time, anytime in the car driving, you know, you can pray anywhere. That's the beauty of prayer, right? And you don't have to be regimented where you spend an hour a day, 10 minutes a day. Uh, You don't have to be super disciplined about it. But I think it does change things. It does affect your physical body. It does affect your brain. Um, And why wouldn't you want to talk to the creator of the universe? Hmm. Why wouldn't you want to talk to the person, the you know, God who can affect anything and all things yeah. in every way possible. So oh. um, the one that knows us best. It's not something you have to be so regimented about. It's mm-hmm. like talking to a friend. Um, so that that's my opinion. I know Matt, other, you're people have other yeah. opinions on it. And, you know. But I think you're freeing a lot of people to relax about it and yeah. to trust the love of God and that having more casual conversational prayer is really, it's a good thing. And totally. if it leads to, you know, deeper, greater, bigger, longer forms of prayer, great. But there's no excuse for not getting started if you have that understanding that you're bringing to us. That is, God is glad to hear from you and you can be relaxed with it. So let's talk a little bit, Matt, about pray.com specifically. And yeah. and what are the, the features and the benefits? I mean, I know because We've been on there and we love pray.com, but let's let's share with the listeners and the viewers um, exactly what you have to offer at pray.com. Yeah. So right away, when you open the app, you're going to get hit with a daily devotional and it's got uh, amazing imagery behind it uh, with, you know, the text of the devotional and the Bible verse. And you're also going to hear it on audio. And then it tracks every single day, how many days in a row that you do the daily prayer. So you know, gamification you, for prayer. That's right. That's right. <laughs> well, when you think about gamification, it's used in such terrible ways, right? Yeah. With like gambling and all sorts of things. But why can't we use gamification to get people to remember to pray? So we were talking about, you know, it's hard. I, you know, remember discipline. Accountability. Mm-hmm. Why, yeah. Let's just make accountability. And why not make our day easier to be able to do it? So the app sends you a push notification to remind you, you open it, you get the daily devotional, and then it tracks how many days in a row. And once you open it, you can remind other people to pray too, who are in your friends. So you can just click and say, hey, this person's going to lose their streak. They're not going to remember to do their daily prayer today. You can just click remind, sends them a push notification, remind them to do it. Uh, and they, you know, people love that. They love that their friends care about them and that or family members, and they're reminding them to pray. So right away, that's what you get uh, in the app. And then when you open it, uh, we've we've done some incredible things. We've got amazing uh, podcasts in the app. We have a 61-piece orchestra that we hired to do all the music for uh, our biblical sagas, which is the Bible scripted as like an audio show where you can listen to your favorite Bible stories in a come to life in a cinematic audio version um you know we've got that also available in a kid's version too my nephews love david and goliath and listening to it and uh you know it's really great for kids when they're falling asleep and adults to fall asleep we have a huge sleep problem in america Mm -hmm. our minds are so busy there's so many things going on in the news from pandemics to wars why not fall asleep to your favorite Bible story? Mm -hmm. And so we've seen that being very popular. And that's some of the things you can get in the app. We've got 
amazing pastors and media ministries uh, all over the world um, that are in the app as well that have incredible, you know, more theology, theological content, uh, diving deep into different things um, in the Bible. And yeah, so that, those are some of the things that you can get in the app. It's a one-stop so shop yeah. for prayer yeah. and uh, right. all things uh, Jesus. And actually, I see here in some of the notes that I have here that uh, this is a number one app for daily prayer and faith-based audio content. Uh, and it's the only religious app in history to break Apple's top five lifestyle wow. category. Mm. Like that's yep. huge. That is. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. I, I, you know, go, ahead. go ahead. We hit number one, uh, actually in lifestyle mm. in 125 countries around the world. So wow, Matt. It's, it's been, it's been, Praise a, God. And really it's only because of God. I mean, it's only because of God that he brought us together. It's only because of God that we've been able to grow the way we've grown. Um, and yeah, we've had over 1.4 billion listening minutes of content on the app. Oh, Jesus so Lord. People, impact. people are um, hungry. Yeah. And, you know, it, it's hard. We have, you just mentioned it before, we have busy lives, right? So while you're driving, while you're, while you're walking, walking. <laughs> while you're at the gym or you're doing chores in the house, you can yeah. go right here and just click play and you can get all the Bible-based content that you want. Well, it's not hard to find, pray.com, and uh, it's an app that's uh, most widely used around the world. There are other apps out there. Uh, I was going to ask you some of the distinctives of yours, but as yeah. you were explaining what the app was doing, I, I, I hear that the distinctives are you've got such tremendous variety yeah. and depth and quality. Uh, but every, you know, every app out there has got a vision. What's distinctive about pray.com's vision? Yeah, we we want to uh, leave a legacy of helping others. So uh, really, the metric we look at all the time is people sharing content. Mm. We have 130 million shares of the app and content wow. outside the app on other platforms. Wow. And, you know, some of those, one, one person wrote in, he's a police officer in Ohio, and he wrote in and he said that... Um, he was coming home from his shift and he was intending to commit suicide that day. Ooh. And in that moment, a friend texted him a piece of content from the pray.com app. Wow. And he listened to it all night. Hmm. And he said that we saved his life. Hmm. We, we didn't save his life. I didn't save his life. God saved his life. His hmm. friend that listened to God in that moment to share that piece of content and have the empathy and the EQ, you know, the emotional quotient to understand his friend was hurting in this time saved his life. Uh, we are just a vessel and we are able to orchestrate that. And so that is something that we really look at. It's sharing content, uh, getting the message out, getting the word out to people who are hurting who, you know, like you said earlier, we have a huge mental and spiritual health uh, crisis going on in America. We call it the hidden pandemic after the pandemic because it's something people don't want to talk about. Right. But there's people hurting all over. And you can't always pandemic. visually see the pain, right? Yeah, that's Until right. Maybe it's too late. And, and most folks are embarrassed about talking about it. Mm. It's just in my head. You know, it just wow. absolutely love. I haven't heard a, a vision quite like that, where you want to leave a legacy of helping others so that everyone yeah. can experience that. And with today's technology, it is so easy to do. It's just taking your index finger, or your thumb and hitting a couple of buttons and clicking. That's and right. that's a great, great story to illustrate the, uh, the effectiveness of doing that. Yeah. That's and right. I think about the people that you're reaching around the world, yeah. you know, <clears throat> I mean, that's the power of technology. So being, um, you know, a part of the movement of Pray.com, you use technology to, to help solve social issues and create community, right? Like that's that's the big goal. Let's yeah. talk about more about that bigger vision of the community piece, because that's also part of that mental health disconnect. And Pray.com yeah. wants to make a big impact there. 
Absolutely. So like I said, you know, we want to uh, create a world where everyone leaves a legacy of helping others. How we create community in the app is a couple different ways. One, with the sharing of content, right? You can share content, you can create group chats. People are creating Bible studies. I just found someone called me and like a few days ago and they said, we use pray.com for our Bible studies every week. That's Matt, cool. is that the app that you guys did? Like, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> so, I love it. Uh, you know, creating community, not just online, but offline is something that we think about all the time. Having those reminders for people to pray because we have those busy lives. And then we also have a community feed in the app where you can post prayers and prayer requests, and then you can mark them as answered, or you can update those prayer requests. And when you mark a prayer request as answered, everyone gets a push notification with an animation and it says, thank you for praying for my prayer request. Um, so that. we're really creating community in that way where, you know, people feel comfortable sharing these really big prayer requests. Um, and even if they don't, you can post them uh, anonymously too. Um, you know, some people, they don't want to post that they're going through a hard time with their spouse. and um, you know, it doesn't look good and they're at their last end and they need prayer. And so it's um, a safe place. Yeah, that's right. It's a safe yeah. place where Christians can get together and pray for each other or people that are seeking and they want to see what it's all about. So, right. That's so good. Well, you gave us the example of the gentleman that um, wanted to end his life, the, the police officer. Do you have another story that you could share with us? Because that's so powerful. Yeah, I do. And this one, you know. It always gets me, actually. Um, we had a woman in the beginning who called in and said she couldn't log into the app. We failed her. Mm. Like, we failed her. She called in. And this is early days. So there's like six people in a broom closet <laughs> in Santa Monica. <laughs> like, we're trying. Yeah. yeah. I mean, people, th people at that time thought it was like, you know, Facebook or, you know, there's 3,000 right. employees or something. No, no, no. Right. There's six people. So you call in. You're, it's ringing two people and then you get me. So uh, she's on the phone with me. I'm not going to reveal any names, but she just said, you know, I can't log into the app and I have to log into the app right now. I have to, I need it. And we failed her and I felt terrible. And I just said, you know what? Let me help you out. I'll figure it out. Don't worry. And I, we ended up getting it resolved on the phone. I just said, hey, what, you know, tell me about yourself while I'm trying to fix it, right? I'm trying to, get her to be able to log in and find out if it's going to the wrong email or what, what's happening. And she's telling me, she said, Matt, I'm in the chemo chair. Ooh. And I said, okay, what's the chemo chair? Cause I was like, I genuinely don't know. And, um, she said, I'm in the chemo chair. I, 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 and I'm like, what is that? She's like, well, I have to get chemotherapy and stage four cancer. Uh, and I said, Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. You know, I'd love to pray for you. And she said, this is actually my second time. Uh, and I've, I've outlived my children and my husband. I'm all alone. And I love listening to your, uh, biblical saga series. It helps me in the four hours I'm in the chemo chair. And I said, Oh, I'm like, I'm getting, I'm losing it, right? Like I'm trying to hold it together on this call. Uh, and I finally ended up getting her to log in. Well, we hang up and, you know, I pray for her. We hang up and I am going and connecting with different pastors of different churches and they're telling their congregations about the pray.com app. So I fly to a city and I'm with a pastor on stage and I tell them about what we're doing with Pray.com and how, you know, the app is working. And at the end, a woman comes and pulls me aside. And it was her. Mm. No way. I just got goosebumps. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Ugh. And she was still alive. And she said she's still dealing with cancer, but that the app <sighs> has helped her out so much in that time. Oh, and, hallelujah. Yeah, I just, I took a photo with her. We, you know, I gave her a big hug. I prayed for yeah. her. Hey, you may not have gone to seminary, but you've got a pastoral role <laughs> in this world. Thank you well, very and much. Thank stories you. like that, hearing that kind of impact, that that helps sort of fuel those eighty-hour work weeks <laughs> that keep yeah. you going. Yeah, and uh, I mean, actually, 
Because of that, what we do is any feedback we get from the app, we pipe it into our system where all the employees see it every day. Oh, that's so, so that's powerful. Every yes. single person at Prey.com sees uh, all of the reviews every single day. Mm. We have a system we use. It's called Slack. Everybody's on it. Uh, and you have to click it to get rid of the red dot notification. And so we know every employee is seeing all these reviews that come in every day. And, you know, it's, it's reviews, not like any other app. It's people, you know, we're in the hospital. My daughter is, is not doing well and she's got lymphoma and I'm playing her, your kids Bible mm -hmm. stories every day, or, mm -hmm. uh, you know, my marriage is suffering and I listen to your app all the time. Uh, so we just get all of these reviews every single day and we respond to every single one. Wow. I, I responded up to, I think 50,000 and now That's we're cool. at over 150,000. Every morning I try to do like 50 or a hundred responses. So. Wow. Well, Sore yeah. fingers. <laughs> Oh man, that's amazing, I, well, yeah. Matt. We're so we're just so grateful uh, that God put His hand on you and your partners mm -hmm. to make this happen. I'm 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 guessing I could be way off on this, but I'm guessing that one of the most written about topics in Christendom is prayer. You can go and find so many books on prayer, which tells me that we're all hungry to stay connected to God. Yep, we really want intimacy with our Creator, and we cannot thank you enough for making it that much more simple and easy to get connected by having this kind of technology available and an app that really cares a lot about people and cares about your relationship with God. So yeah. kudos to you and uh, just congrats on the incredible success that God has given you. Thanks for having the heart that you have for reaching people. Yes. Thank you for being on the show. Thank you so much. We couldn't do it. I mean, the only reason that we've been able to do this is having an incredible team. You know, we've mm -hmm. seen 33,000 resumes to hire 50 employees and 100 contractors. So oh, we have a world-class team of the best yeah. of the best people who are able to put this together every single day. And they work so hard for everyone yeah. who's using the app. Uh, so we couldn't do it without God blessing it and our incredible team. So thank wow. you so what much. What a legacy. Oh. What a legacy. Well, we thank you so much, Matt. Yeah. Thanks for being on your biggest breakthrough and thanks for sharing uh, a couple of your breakthroughs with us. Keep, keep, you know, going strong, man, because you're, you're doing mighty things. So we appreciate you. Thank you so much. Have a yeah. great day. Take thank care. Thanks. God bless. Blessings, Matt. Take care. So fun. Oh my goodness. They are doing some pretty amazing things. Yeah. So I, I know again that people are more than ever before, uh, wanting to know and learn more about prayer, especially in light of some of the, the world craziness that's going on right now. Yeah, it's no not, joke. Not just in our own backyard, but really, I mean, just other parts of the world. And it's, as we're recording this, there's there's war in Israel. Uh, mm -hmm. There's tremendous inflation in the U.S. and other parts of the world. There's and uh, people, famines that aren't even being talked about in parts of Africa. People are afraid. Uh, yeah. They've got and, anxiety there. Yeah. You know, and it, it, it drives us to want to know, God, are you there? And can you help me? Yeah. And yeah. that's why we're, we're, we don't want to take for granted the great ways in which the heart of God is reaching out to people to bring them closer to himself. And pray.com is one example of that. This is God's heart at work. That's right. So that you can get connected with him. And it's, it's cutting edge, if you will. You know, I think, you know, sometimes, you know, we, we have to continually grow and, uh, that kind of thing with the times, yeah. right? And oh, so yeah. pray.com, yeah. I mean, God knew that he could entrust Matt with mm. us. He had developed 6,000 apps already. He's like, all right, this guy's yeah. ready to go. Yeah. And so look at how God is just blessing us and, um, and able to, to reach us and, and, uh, and all of you that are listening to this app. Yeah. And don't underestimate what God wants to do in your life. You yes. might not be a pray.com app developer, but you got something in your life that God Never has too used. Late is using yeah. and wants to use. So never stop believing that you're here for a very important reason and that God is delighted when you allow him to use you to accomplish purposes that 
honor him and bless others. That's right. That's right. So thank you so much for tuning into this episode of Your Biggest Breakthrough. We hope you are blessed. We hope you go to pray.com, yeah. download the app, get it for yourself and start using it and and uh, just get in, entrenched with, with all the um, uh, applications that they have there within their app, the prayer, the uh, the sermons, um, our podcast is on there. Yes, indeed it so is. So that's fun. Yeah, a lot the of visibly fit podcast. Yeah. Well, yeah, and if you want more about that, then go to wendypet.com. Yes. Uh, and you'll find out all kinds of great things that could be of help to you. That's true. Or come on over to toddisburner.com if you're a guy. And we just started a Maverick Makers coaching group, and we've got some good resources available. So we just invite you to get in touch with us. We'd love to be able to help you if we're able to. Yep wherever you need to go to get, uh, just uh, to grow deeper, yeah. grow deeper in the Lord. We're here for you. Pray.com is here for you. Just go there. All right. Thanks again for tuning into your biggest breakthrough. We'll catch you next time. Well, that's a wrap for today's show. We hope you enjoyed it. As always, we love spending time with you right here on your biggest breakthrough podcast. We look forward to seeing you on the next episode. But until then, just head on over to yourbiggestbreakthrough.com where you'll find some free resources and information and a place where you can comment and we would love to dialogue with you there. Thanks so much for tuning in and we'll see you next time.